Hi everyone, it's actually 1st of April today, but I realized I haven't filmed a um, catch-up video for March, so a little bit late, but there's just a couple of things to mention and then so it shouldn't be a too long video. Now, if I sound a bit strange, it's because I haven't filmed actually in weeks. I pre-filmed um, the videos and um, yeah, it's just um, my son had chicken pox. So we were stuck at home for a week and my schedule kind of wasn't really going as as I wanted it to go in terms of art um, and now I'm just catching up with things and so yes it feels a little bit different uh, to film a video when you haven't done it in a while anyhow so today um, I just have a couple of things to mention and let's start with um, the the thing that I discovered is a dip pen this this month or actually in March the the last month so I think I told you about my super old dip pen which was this one here um which I had for years and years this is probably 15 if not 17 years old from my college years when I used to study art um and yeah so it wasn't great um so I decided to finally get a couple of uh, dip pens, which I will do a separate um, whole video. So I'll share those uh, with you then. But today I want to share with you this glass dip pen that I have absolutely loved. So I got this a couple of weeks ago and I actually used it. So hence there's a little bit of ink residue there but it is so beautiful it is absolutely stunning the way it's done and also it's so much better than I expected I didn't know what to expect from a glass dip pan because I thought the concept of having um, glass tip gliding on paper is a little bit um it's difficult to imagine because you think that will be quite scratchy or um, it just won't feel good. But in fact, it's the exact opposite. It is beautiful. Um, so essentially what you do is you dip all of this into the ink and then slowly it will release the ink as you draw uh, down the spiral kind of um, shapes of the dip um, nip <laughs> and um, that's what happens so I will link it below now this particular pen it comes in different colors so you can choose I chose the white one which it has this beautiful silver frosty detail running right in the middle of it hope you can see it's beautifully crafted gorgeous pen and it's at a good price it's not expensive in my opinion and it also comes with this little stand which you can rest your dip pan uh, and that ensures that it doesn't um, you know it doesn't roll on your uh, desk and gets the ink all over the place so it kind of rests uh, the dip pan and also looks quite good as well so it comes in this uh, box so you could gift it to someone uh, who you know would love such a thing I mean if you enjoy fountain pens I highly highly recommend you try this little baby it's just um, like it's um, it opened another I feel like it opened another door in terms of art and drawing for me and I will show you an example of, of what I mean so basically um so this page here let me just find that for you so this page right here is exactly what i'm talking about so ignore this one i'll mention this in the other video but um look at these flowers i have done all of them with um this crystal glass dip pan uh just by dipping the um tip of it once into the ink 
And what you have to make sure is once you come out of the bottle of ink, kind of scoop the ink, the excess ink off it slightly on the edge of the bottle because otherwise it will have too much and you might create like a big blob or something. But basically I have created all of these, so basically all of that, all of this, just with that pen and dipping it once. This is how far it went. It started to um, run out of ink over here, which you can hopefully see. Uh, but it, I was just amazed because these are done with a classic dip pen and all of them are different nibs and I had to be able to finalize one of the flowers. So each of the flowers is done with a different nib, as you can see. Um, I had to dip so many times just to finish one flower in here. All of this is done just with one. So it's silky smooth, doesn't scratch, it doesn't skip. It's just, it almost felt better than some of my good quality um, fountain pens, which sounds ridiculous, but it really, I was impressed um, by it. So that is that. So that's my discovery of the month of March. And the other thing I wanted to mention is um, in terms of art, I'm in a weird place at the moment because there are quite a few things that I want to try. So I've got new art supplies or kind of craft supplies that I want to try and incorporate into my art. Um, so I'm trying to at the moment try as many different styles as I can to really develop a strong style um, of my art and so I find that by just sticking to only watercolors I would never be able to get there it's very limiting in my opinion so although I love watercolors um, I still want to play with other things as well so this is basically where I have been most of the uh, month in March and um yeah, so I've been kind of gathering ideas and I keep sort of uh, wanting to do abstract and figure drawings and uh, botanical and it's sort of all a little bit mixed and, and all over the place I find at the moment. So um, I basically um, ripped this photograph out of a like a food um, newspaper and I kept it because I absolutely love it. I love the style of it. I love the colors and I want to do something with it like a journal collage type of thing or incorporate it in some sort of maybe other um, drawings or paintings and it's just sitting on my desk and at the moment I have a few ideas but not quite there yet. So this is again what I've been sort of dealing with in the month of March and then finally I wanted to share this thing with you which is um, something I would highly uh, advise not to purchase so you know um, I'll just grab it quickly so basically um, when I do art which um, incorporates paints like acrylics or if I am going to do some splatters or if I'm going to do ink drawings I tend to pull out my Rangers craft sheet and this is um, such a good quality um, protective mat it's really thin it's super flexible and you can literally stick paint onto here and then paint like use it like a palette and paint from it onto your sketchbook but the point is um, it's fantastic but it's in a craft color and when I'm filming I personally don't like this color it comes out quite dark uh, in the videos and I love the background to be white because I find that then colors look so much better um, so I started looking into what I can find similar thing <laughs> uh, but lighter colors so I found this one which uh, came all the way from China and it is horrific first of all this is how it came it came in a plastic bag 
and it was folded up like that, which I already thought was a bizarre way of transporting something like that. Um, I don't remember how this one came, but I think it, it came like in a roll or something because it was, it had no um, folds in there whatsoever. So it, um, I don't remember how it came, but yeah. So anyways, this came as a fold and as I unfolded it, I could see a lot of like scrunched up um, creases. And so then on a closer look, look at that so wherever there were folds there are actually holes in this thing and it is just the most bizarre thing ever because it defines the purpose of of this whole mat which is supposed to be you know like waterproof and resistant and all of that uh, obviously if you're going to do any art it's going to go right through these holes onto your desk so basically this needs to be bent at the moment I haven't bent it yet I think what I may do is I might cut it up into smaller pieces and use it like um, a palette I have to actually see whether this is waterproof or not because it's slightly different um, make like a different type of um, material that it's made out of so I don't even know whether that would work but basically at the minute I'm just doing my nail art on this I just fold it up like that and kind of protect my desk from from nail polish speaking of which if you're not into nail polish then this is it for this video and I will see you next time and thanks for watching but if you are then I have a little something for you which I'll do as a little bonus today um, so you may have seen in one of my videos mention or maybe I'm not sure actually have I done it yet or is it coming late? I'm not sure. I don't remember. I've been editing so many videos that I don't remember which order they will or have published. Anyhow, so I have um, in one of my videos mentioned this Moyu um, nail art plates and also the little set that you need to get to use it with. So this is called Choose Your Style and it's the clear stamp and scraper. So you also get an additional a little thing to replace once the other one is, is done. So that's great. And the one I had, which was the older version from years ago, it actually wasn't great. So I realized I need to get a new one and this is the new one. And it worked really beautifully. I've done it already. So today I wanted to show you how to do this. So I've got just regular nail polish on my nails and I'm going to take a darker color to print sort of on top. Now this particular plate is from the artist range and I'll try to find it and link it below. So this one is called Artist Collection 2. So sorry about the, I'm trying to, to see which way to show you, not to show you the camera instead. So um, it's like a geisha kind of picture with the skull images and what it is, it's like a painting that you can take different patterns from the geisha's uh, robe or her hair or any of the other patterns. So there are these crosses, for example, and then you can uh, transfer it onto your nails. So that's what I'm going to do. And I'm just going to film it for you and show you how to use this in case you are into kind of nail art and want to jazz up your nails because this makes it really, um, really easy. Okay, so what you will need for that is some sort of um, earbuds. I find they are the best to clean uh, in between uses. And then you'll need a nail polish remover. Let me just get my sketchbooks out of the way. And since we are doing this, I'm just going to unfold this mat. <laughs> And use it like that all right so nail polish remover a dark or like a contrasting um, nail color to go with your original base color now that depends what you like um, and also some nail polishes work better than others I found so um, let's start so basically all you do is you place your nail um, plate down and then pick what kind of um, art you would like to 
to do. So I quite like these flowers there. And um, I think I'm going to try and transfer the flowers. So you just go straight in like so. Now at the minute it's hard to say how big I'd like this to be because it needs to fit onto my um, nail. So once you applied it, take your scraper and scrape it down like so. And then as soon as you've done that, pick it up, as you can see I picked it up, and then look down onto your nail like so and then just in a circular motion make sure you've done it like that so that's your nail art done super super quick and then you might want to press it down a little bit like this and it's dry so you don't need to do anything else to it at all so to do the next nail you will need to clean up Your nail plate so to do that I found that the best way is to use one of those cotton pads and first of all also re remove it from the scraper because you want the scraper to work perfectly so you have to do this between every nail because otherwise it will not transfer very well the nail polish won't it basically will dry and then if you apply a second layer of it, you won't be able to lift it very well. So I just clean it up like so. Make sure it's dry before you add nail polish. And if there are any pieces of cotton or anything like that, remove them all nicely. And then just dry it up like that and do it again. So, let's see, I'm going to do this part of the flower now. And again, scrape it. So you can scrape it up or down, whichever way you like. The key is to pick it up relatively quickly before it dries and then just go like that. Don't worry if it goes onto your skin a little bit because you can always clean that up. So I'll show you here. Just going to take my earbuds that merged in nail polish remover and just go like that around it. There are things you can also buy to like apply onto your cuticle so it's easier to clean up but to be honest with you this takes seconds so I don't really mind doing that like that. And that is it. So that's how easy this is. I hope you can see. It's super fun. So I'm just going to go ahead and probably do all of my nails because it's such a satisfying way of making your nails look pretty that it's hard to just stop with the accent nails so I tend to do all of them. So I decided to show you the finished result so it took me probably about 10 minutes altogether and you can see like the patterns um, are not repeated on every nail and that's the good thing about the um, like the artist plates like this because they they have all these kind of different patterns and you can change it every time and create something individual for every nail and I think it looks really neat and cute and you know you could go for like I said other colors you could do like uh, yellow and teal and pinks and whites whatever you fancy. I went for this coral uh, which is actually, if you're interested, it's called the Sunday Fun Day by Essie. It's got a little bit of a sheen and shimmer, but you can't really see it um, once you apply it. It sort of doesn't look flat, but it looks um, doesn't look glittery in that sense. And then for my dark color, I went for the Berry Boudoir by CND Vinylax, and I find that. 
some nail polishes work better than others and this nail polish seems to work really well for transferals so yeah um so hope you enjoyed it thanks for watching and see you soon